Grackle. Haven't seen a lot of starlings this year. Not that that's a bad thing. But they're usually plentiful. But instead we have a Grackle. 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 He's mooning us. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench, another little discreet amplifier. Before I get into that, I want to say thanks to James for sending this in. I won't reveal it just yet, but it says 50 by 50 W on it, watts. And guess what? It's new. Well, imagine that. It's new as opposed to what? Used. And I haven't forgotten about this one. Well, actually, maybe I did forget about it, but this uh, LM3886 stereo amplifier board, this looks very interesting. And I definitely want to review this. Huang Ying. I don't know how you say that. Huang Hing, whatever. Yeah, I'll take a look at those boards. I just have uh, other things I want to make videos on, so those will be uh, down the pipe a little bit before I get to them. Also thought up of something to make an acrylic case for, because I had some people wanting me to do a video on uh, making an acrylic project case. So I figured out a project, so, you know, that's coming up. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Had a little flurry of new Patreons join, and I really appreciate that support. Okay, so what I have on the bench today is a little amplifier, as I said. I'm only using TO92 type transistors. Low power, only operates at 6 volts. So you can't expect a lot of output power, being just a push-pull amp driving an 8-ohm load. So if we do the math here, with 6 volts, we know that in a theoretically perfect amplifier, you'll get a 6-volt peak-to-peak voltage, which means it's 3 volts peak. And if I convert that to RMS, it's 2.12 volts RMS. If I square that divided by 8, we end up with 562 milliwatts. Now, in the real world, because of losses, and with such a low voltage, the loss, the, the ratio of losses is going to be a lot higher than an amplifier that operates at a higher voltage. So in the real world, we end up with about 200 milliwatts of output. But again, the idea of this amplifier is low power consumption. You know, it's good enough to drive some small speakers. It could be used with a radio receiver type circuit. Or something like that. You know, it's going to give you about the equivalent power that a circuit like an LM386 would at 6 volts with an 8 ohm load. Is this really all that practical? I mean, you have all these uh, integrated circuit chips. Well, to me, it's about the do it yourself spirit and the just the fun of designing and building a little circuit. Here's a schematic diagram. It's just your typical push-pull emitter follower type output buffer actually referred to as a buffer because it has no voltage gain it's just kind of a current buffer it increases the current for driving the loudspeaker and the driver transistor here operates in class A and it's the part of the circuit that has gain when I was setting it up I was trying to bias it using a couple diodes, a 1N4148. When used with these transistors, the current was just too high. It was running about 80 milliamps, 70 or 80 milliamps in the output stage. And I want this to be battery friendly. I want it to draw very low current. So using the 1N4001 diodes, they have a lower forward voltage drop. And it got the bias perfect. So the circuit just sitting idle draws only around 10 milliamps, give or take. This resistor here is the feedback resistor. It's also 
responsible for biasing this transistor and you have to get the value just right to have the voltage at the output stage here to be one half the supply voltage if it's shifted too far either way the amplifier will start clipping on one side before the other reducing its dynamic range or in other words its maximum output power this circuit up here is I consider it mandatory it's called a bootstrap circuit and you might search that on my channel I did a video explaining how this works I say it's mandatory because without it you just get so much less output power it really helps to increase your output power using the bootstrap circuit here and I know somebody's going to ask me can you use this for guitars well not as it stands it has too low gain and too low impedance what you would need to do is add another stage on the front of this to increase the input impedance and also increase the uh, the gain and then you could use it as like a mini guitar amplifier or something like that you want to use of course a very efficient guitar type speaker in that case okay here's the amplifier on the board it can be made a lot more compact I just can't do that on the socket board but part of the idea is that it can be made really compact you know these resistors are much larger than they need to be it's just that I only had this resistor value in this size so that's the only reason I'm using them these two capacitors here are not shown on the schematic they're not really needed I just put them here on the perf board because it's uh, the uh, star grounding's not ideal on these and I just want to make sure the amplifier is stable so yeah properly laid out on a perf board you don't have to include those but anyhow I have channel 2 on the supply set up for 6 volts current limited at 300 milliamps just in case there's a problem turn it on I heard a little thump on the speaker and uh, it's drawing only 10 milliamps I mean the resolution you know it's not really high on the supply but it's 10 milliamps give or take so what I'll do is uh, of course I'll play you a sample of music the Bongo Madness copyright safe from the YouTube library. Here we go. Okay, sounds good to me. No distortion. But, you know, when you turn it up, doesn't get a lot louder without clipping because of course you know only has a six volt supply voltage and it's not bridged or anything so next let's take a look at the oscilloscope and uh, check out the output power okay I'm putting a one kilohertz sine wave into the input here we're getting about one volt out let's move over to the input here and see what we're putting in so we're putting in 141 millivolts. What would that be? I'd have to punch that up on the calculator. One volt divided by point. So the gain's only about seven times. And that's fine because our output voltage is not ever going to be that great. Yeah, we're getting a nice clean looking waveform. It doesn't look distorted. We'll take a look at the uh, spectrum analyzer and see what the distortion is. But so as I turn it up, you can see it's starting to flatten out. I have to turn this down. See, it's clipping there. So we're hitting clipping. It's kind of a soft clipping characteristics with these amplifiers. So I'll pull it back here. It's really hard to tell. I'll probably have to use the FFT, but yeah, just before we get into clipping, about 1.35 volts. So if I do the math, we're getting about 230 milliwatts of output power. As far as using the amplifier with 4 ohm loads, 
I wouldn't recommend it. You might actually get less output and you probably would need a heat sink. Okay, I'm going to use the FFT on my old Rigel here. Setting up the FFT on this thing is just monkey business. You have to jack around with it so much. I wonder if there's a way I can save the settings once I get it done. But that's for another time. Okay, so we're right at clipping. And if I tone that down just a bit. See where are we at? We're at 1.18 volts. Now this is my pilot signal, 1% of the fundamental here. Surprisingly cleaner than I thought it would be. Of course these amplifiers, they're going to start, you know, just before clipping, they're going to start really peaking up with the distortion. But you know, when I back that out, it's, you know, there's a little blip of a second here. And just before the distortion rises, before clipping there, it's actually pretty clean. So I'm kind of surprised there. Another thing I like about this amplifier, I'll turn it up just before clipping there. And it's only drawing 100 milliamps. So even at full continuous power, it doesn't draw a lot of electrical current so it would be really good with batteries another thing I'll show you with the uh, bootstrap circuit if I remove the bootstrap function see how the uh, amplitude decreases and it's already into clipping you know we're down close to a volt and it's still distorted I have to turn it down around this area before and it's still not that perfect but uh, I'll plug the bootstrap capacitor back in. See how that peaks up? Less distortion. And you, know, you can turn it up a lot higher before it starts to clip. So much better performance with that bootstrap circuit. That's why I say it's mandatory. Well, last but not least, we'll take a look at the frequency response. We're at 20 hertz now. The signal should be at this graticule and this upper graticule here. I'm using a 470 microfarad capacitor on the output so it will impact the uh, frequency response. As I crank it up at 40 hertz, yeah, we're almost there. I keep cranking it up here. We're at 70. So now we're just about there at 100. Right there's 100. And I'll just keep cranking it up. I'm using the field tech function generator. And whenever I step it, it has like a glitch to it. And 20 kilohertz. So it's... You know, because of the capacitor coupled outputs, it's going to roll off at the lower frequency. But once you get to 100, it's going to be perfectly flat all the way up to 20 kilohertz and beyond. And we can take it to 30, 40 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, and so on. It's just going to stay flat. Well, there you have it. A simple, discrete amplifier. It'll deliver about the same output as an LM386 does at 6 volts with an 8 ohm load and it might be something you're interested in tinkering with on the breadboard and with that I'll wrap it up here thanks for watching